And I'm really excited about our guest. We have renowned glass artist John Kuhn on with us today. John, it's great to have you here. Um, if you would, just tell everyone a little about yourself, and we'll go from there. Thank you, Neil. Um, a little bit about myself. I've been an artist now for working in glass for about 45 years, which is long. That's a lot of, no, lot of years. It's a big number. Yeah. If uh, you'd have told me at the beginning that that's how long it was going to be, I would never have believed it. Because looking ahead, it's a much bigger number than looking back at it. Well, I've only been alive for 40 years. So. <laughs> yeah. That puts everything in perspective, doesn't it? Yeah. But uh, I got out of grad school, and a piece of my thesis exhibition was juried into an exhibition at uh, Corning Glass Museum called New Glass, which then traveled around the world, and uh, I got picked up by a few galleries. I tried to get teaching jobs, but nobody would hire me, so I didn't know what else to do, so I went out and started a studio, started making some stuff. I've always said that I'm doing this because I wasn't qualified for anything else. <laughs> what you're doing, what you should be doing, clearly. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. Uh, so what did you, uh, what was your, um, what was your education? What? Well, I got a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Ceramics and had a pottery studio for a while. Where, where was that at? What college? At Washburn University, Topeka, Kansas. Okay. And had a studio there and and then moved to the, East Coast because I wanted to go to Virginia Commonwealth and get a uh, further education in furniture design, which I did. And then while I was there, I took glass blowing as an elective and ended up changing majors or changing media from wood to glass. And like I think I just said, part of my thesis exhibition from the uh, getting the Master of Fine Arts in Glass was entered into a museum exhibition at Corning Glass Museum. And then from there, it just kind of took off. So a lot of galleries came to that museum exhibition and said they were interested in handling my work. And they started showing it. And it that time I was selling some production work as well to pay the bills and I was selling one of my serious pieces every, about every two or three months. And then the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City acquired one of my serious pieces. And from that point, I started selling a serious piece once a month or, or more. Well, wow. and that seemed to be the uh, when the floodgates kind of opened, at least cracked open a little bit. The water started yeah. flowing a little bit more, or energy started flowing a little bit more, and and it seemed like I had a career. So I didn't know what else to do. Yeah. So I just kept at it, and then some more museums. And what year was that? It was the Metropolitan Museum acquired a piece in 79. Okay. 1979. And then 1980, the Natural History Museum at the Smithsonian acquired a piece. And then it was uh, several museums over the years and the first years, and they just all... Now, what year did you start doing the uh, cold glass sculpting? That happened in, as a gradual transition, happened in 84, 85, 86. Because uh, one day blowing glass, I, I tore a tendon in my arm. Uh, glass blowing is a very strenuous activity. So I tore a tendon in my arm and then had to have surgery, yeah. and uh, it became apparent that glass blowing wasn't something a, an old man was going to be doing. Right, yeah. So uh, 
I just decided I had to develop something that I could do when I became old. Yeah. And I'm still looking for that. When I'm going to get old, I mean. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're in great shape. Man. How old Thank you? you. No. Um, uh, well, I'm very – I have a five-year-old son, so you know i got to be young. Yeah, that's, yeah, that'll keep you young, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Or make you old. but i'm 72 yeah that's incredible yeah i know that you um do a pretty strict vitamin regimen and stuff like that so got to it's working you got to you got to do all kinds of things the the older you you get the more you have to do the more time and energy and you got to spend on feeling good and staying healthy yeah right um I know with the uh, you're most well known for the cold glass sculpting. I've seen some of your blown glass, which is incredible, also. But Thank the uh, the cold sculpting stuff's amazing. Like it's unbelievable. And uh, I know you're one of the first people in that. I, I guess one of the first people to, to do that art form professionally, uh, at least the way you do it. And there's only a handful of people that do what you do. Um, well, there's nobody doing what I do, right? Yeah, or something but there's, similar. There are others working with cold glass sculptures, uh, David Hutchhausen, Michael Taylor, Bill Carlson, but he's retired now. Uh, some mind, some names that come to mind. Uh, Tolan Sands. One, yeah, you Tolan, told me about him. Tol- Tolan yeah. Sands, a, a friend of mine, good friend. Yeah, his stuff's really nice. Uh, and everybody has their own look, their own aesthetic, their own, right, yeah. and they develop their own technologies too. Tolden and I talk about technology fairly often. Okay. And we trade ideas and things, but he definitely has his own aesthetic. So that's nice to be able to share parts of it that we can share. Right. And still have our own identities. Yeah, yeah. Which is, of course, very important. Well, you're artists, so your work's going to be unique to yourself, I guess. Exactly, exactly. Um Anybody who's copying somebody else, it, it, you know, it's not authentic. Right, yeah. Um, now, uh, wh- when did you start? Uh, you said it was 84 when you started doing the cold sculpting? Well, about that, I, I had to move from that studio that I was blowing glass in because I couldn't do the the new stuff. So, And I moved down to North Carolina, moved to Winston-Salem. I had a patron in Greensboro and she suggested Winston is the place to be and so I moved there and found a studio that I could live in the top floor found a building I could have my studio in the basement and live on the top floor yeah and that's where I started my first family and was working down there and developing the the artwork that I have become known for now and it just kept you growing, just kept evolving. Uh, the key was always what I told myself then was just to grow a little bit every day. And then at the end of the year, you've grown as an analogy. If you, you walk a, a, a three steps every day at the end of the year, you've walked a mile. Okay. Yeah. And the same, same goes with, uh, personal growth and growth as an artist. Yeah, so. I tell people with business to, uh, the, you know, if, if you can reinvest everything you, you can back into the company and, and just focus on growth, you know, early on, then it'll be more successful. And you've always got to grow, though. You, it's always, you know, when you stop trying to grow, then you, you, you'll go backwards. Yep. Yeah. I, always, I always thought about it. If you're, if you're not moving forward, you're moving back. Yeah, yeah, the, the fire burns out. Right, yeah. right. Um, just so people have an idea, Jesse, can you pull up, um, Instagram on that, on your laptop up there and go to, um, is it, uh, C- Kuhn Studios on Instagram? I think it's John Kuhn Glass. John Kuhn Glass. Okay. I'll, uh, give it a go. Yeah. See if we find out we're talking. And, um, I just want people to see your, your work too, because I came across your work and I was, I mean, it's, it's amazing. And then I found out you were local, you were North Carolina and I was like, wow, that's, that's incredible. And uh, some of the pieces you've done are so intricate. I mean, they're massive pieces, and and you've got thousands of 
cuts in this Sometimes class. Sometimes millions. Million. Wow. Yeah. And it's unbelievable. It's like uh, I, I really, I'm a, I really admire intricate work, and and I think your work is about as intricate as it could possibly be. Thank you. 